Hi, welcome to Wooden Stuff Workshop. I'm David. Today I'm going to show you how I cast my pewter Haspen staple. So stick around and you can see how I did it. So today I'm going to show you how I made this Haspen staple. I might be getting a bit ahead of myself making hardware for the little boxes but I did promise a while ago that I'd show some pewter casting. For a start I'll show you some of the other things that I used to cast. To do this casting you don't need anything special to do it. I've got a little cast furnace here but you don't need one of them but uh, I can show you where I got it from and how much it is now. I think it's cheaper than now than when I bought it a few years ago. So yeah, I've cast things like this little gecko out of the pewter. It's about three millimetres thick there. And then it's uh, like the dots on it stand proud. And uh, like dragonflies like that sort of thing. This is like the biggest thing that I've ever cast before. But with this, doing casting like that, I've had to use like heat proof uh, silicon, special silicon rubber stuff. So I'm going to show you how I went about casting this and how I put it together. The first thing I do is come up with, just draw up a quick design of how I want it to look, how I want the Haspen staple to look. So I just do that on a piece of paper. And at work, I work at a school, we have a laser cutter. And to do this, you don't need a laser cutter. You can still do it in a shed with not a lot. Yeah, I uh, drew up a shape on a piece of paper for the sort of shape I want and then I drew it out in 2D design which is some software that the laser uses. You can cut these out by hand by using a fret, fret saw or you could use a scroll saw to cut them. So I designed that and I cut these on the laser but so these are three millimeters thick that's all it is three millimeter MDF it doesn't matter what size this is I just made them to the size I want to suit my boxes so all you need is to do one like that which will do your hasp this part the hanging part of the uh, hasp and then I did another piece to use for the top of the hasp to be able to fix it to the uh, to the lid then I just made a piece for the staple and I'll show you that in a while how I did that. You get shaped like that cut it out all these are are there's two parts for sides onto this that's all that is and these holes you could just drill them and I've got them four millimeters they take four millimeter dowel so I've just got two sides that sit on like that and then the dowel lines it all up. The reason why I'm lining all this up is because as you can see I've cut a piece out. Let me see if I can see that I'm showing right. I've just filed a piece out at the top there because what you want is a V shape at the top to uh, for where you pour and that's like the sprue that's what they call it so the bit that's left in the end there that you chop off is called the sprue but it just gives you a bigger gap for pouring the uh, pewter in it's only because I get to use our laser at work that I'm able to do it like that otherwise I just fret saw the shape out so that's ready at that. 
Same with these, done the same. So, again, draw it out and then file it out to make a pour in channel again for the sprue. And then dowels again that hold it all. And then all you do is you just want some clamps on there to hold it or some tighter, strong bulldog clips or anything really. Anything that will hold it firmly together. So I've shown you how I've made the mould. Just clamp them together so they'll be ready. And now I'll show you this casting furnace. But like I say, you don't need one of these because you could uh, put small amounts of pewter in some kind of ladle and then you could uh, get a torch on it and melt it like that. Just put some heat on it. Uh, as long as you can get this up to, I think it's around 300 degrees the melting point of it, the melting point of pewter. Not sure about that, you just have to look that up, but it doesn't take that much to melt it. So these uh, Haspen staples that I'm doing are more decorative than anything else, because pewter's obviously isn't very hard. But the thickness that I'm doing at a three mil thick, that is pretty good. You know, there's a bit of strength to it there. Let me show you this casting furnace so here's my little casting furnace so there it is Lyman Big Dipper casting furnace and all it is is you plug it in and it's just got if you turn that right back anti-clockwise that's off turn it up and that's just hotter and hotter and that's maximum there so what this is this is actually for melting lead, for uh, making bullets. But I went on a small, uh, just a day course for pewter casting. And this is the uh, furnace that she had who was teaching us. She was teaching a few of us. And that was, you know, quite, that was, that was probably three years or so ago. But yeah, this is what she had. And uh, I found out that they're not that much. They don't cost that much on the internet. So if I show you now where I got this from. So this is where I got mine from. CDSG Limited Shooting Sports. Okay. So there it is. Lyman Big Dipper Casting Furnace. And it's only... six. £1.20 on there, which is I'm sure that's less than I paid for it, I think. But that's just to show you where I got it from. So if you find them on the internet, just put that into your search, and uh, that's where you can get them from. So the good thing about casting like this is you can reuse all these bits, and these are all the sprues, so the bits that uh, where you tip in castings from all any of my other castings you just save them and you can put them back in the pot so obviously this is uh, very dangerous this hot metal so either wear gloves leather gloves and be ultra careful or use tongs or something like that as long as you keep away from it and don't put your head over the top of the uh, melting pot because if any moisture gets in there or anything you put in that's got some moisture on it can explode up a bit and obviously it would cause some uh, real damage to you so stay back away from it but the good thing about these is you can put them in to melt And reuse, uh, just reuse everything. And like
like I say, it doesn't take long to melt it, look. But yeah, just don't, uh, just be a bit cautious with these and keep, obviously keep people away from it and make them aware. And when you switch this off, it stays hot for a long time after because the amount of uh, hot metal that's in there. So yeah, if you make any mistakes when you're trying things out, you can just melt them again. There it is, shiny. But you do get all this muck on the top of it that you have to scrape off. This is like slag that's all waste. So you just scrape that to one side, or spoon it out and just knock it out. So we're about there, ready for casting. If you're using, I've got a ladle here, you can get proper like uh, ladle things. You can get one from the same place as uh, I got this from. So if you just look on their thing, you can get real ones with a, uh, and they're just uh, like cup shape on a handle, but they've got a hole on one side that you can tip out of, which gives you more control of uh, pouring it out. But I'm just, here I'm just using this old ladle. But whatever you use, you want to heat it up like that. Get it in there and heat that up as well. Let's get these uh, these set up ready for being able to pour into. Just out of curiosity, let's see how hot this pewter is. This is a thermometer that you use for my kiln from doing any clay work. So if I switch that on, this is showing that about 13 or 14 degrees in here so 315 or so there at 314 but uh, what happens is the furnace will keep kicking on and kicking off like that uh, to keep the temperature up so you know we're somewhere up around there around 315 degrees or so Right, remember to stay away from your uh, moulds, keep back from them. Because like I say, if uh, when you pour in there, if there's any damp in there, it could explode out. So you stay well back from there. So we've heated this up. Let's just move the rubbish to the side. Or like I say, you can spoon it off the top and just knock it into uh, the side of your baking tray. So just get some pewter and then tip it in. Don't matter about pouring over because we can use that again. We can melt it. Melt it back in the pot. But like I say, with this, you haven't got as much control with a ladle like this. Because like here, like you can see that I've got spill there. But it's hot, but it doesn't take long for it to set lot. Like. So that can go back in the pot. So you just let them cool down for a bit and then you can take them apart and see what, uh, what you've got. So they're still gonna be hot, but let's see how the castings turned out because uh, if it's turned out all right we can switch the furnace off so that's okay that's filled up you're looking to see if uh, obviously if you've got any bubbles air pockets in there you need to get them out chuck it back in the uh, furnace and then try again That's whenever you're uh, whenever you're cutting, making a cast. You've always got to try that to make sure that you haven't got ways. Uh, 
you've always got to have a way that it can fill up and be able to push any air right up to the top. If I had this that way on, going up to the V on there and filled it in there, there would be air trapped in there and it would go in there and there'd be air trapped around on this side so it won't fill up properly. So you've got to figure a way of positioning whatever you're cutting out to let air out out of the top. So there's that one, that one's okay. And there's that one. So that one has got a slight I don't know if you can see it there there's a slight pit in there like where a bit of either the slags trapped in there or a slight bit of air so uh, we could do that again but I think I'll just make that the back of this one where I'm showing you because uh, that will be okay right when you're getting them out of these just be gentle just tease them out just gently and then they'll come out like that and obviously these sprues are going to get chopped off but we're going to do some work to these now anyway but they would get chopped off and you can chuck them in the pot <gasps> ow but that's what you've got to watch can you see that is the spike on there. Look at how sharp that spike is uh, there. And that's just on that. So just be careful of them. You can fetch them off and bend them. If they're thin like that, you see, you can bend them as well. So just be wary of that. And don't be a plonker like I am. As I say, just tease all these parts out. The more complicated in here, the uh, harder they are to get out. If they're just a basic shape, they're easier to get out. Right, I've disinfected my finger and I've teased all the parts out of the moulds. So, next job, let's hacksaw the sprues off. <laughs> Get rid of them. But yeah, the good thing is you can melt these back down and use them again. So I've cut that one off. So I'm just going to sand these on the belt sander just where I cut the sprue off. And then this one, these prongs, I'm gonna sand probably a millimeter off just to make them a little bit thinner. Just took a bit of the thickness off them. I've also took a bit off the top, off them uh, tops of that, because I'm also going to file the bottom of that as well so that it revolves in this part. This next step, we're just going to drill some holes. So just want some little titchy holes in the, uh, this piece. Hole in the middle there on this one. And then just a hole through there 
on this staple. drilled these out I've drilled that hole big enough to take this staple so that's going through there so what I need to do is put that through there then I'd get what the thickness of material that I'd be making it for so here we've got some that's probably 21 mil thick but uh, I don't think we'd be using anything as thick as that but for this staple all I'd be doing is making sure that the hole on the staple is through there, drawing a line along the middle of there, probably just a bit further. So I want a hacksaw down there and then bend them either way. And just bend these either way. So one one way, one the other. And that, like that, staple. Right, let's do the other piece. So, this we've got, and we just need to put this in the right way round. So this side that we've uh, sanded a little bit off, that's the front side then pick the front side of this piece of the uh, hasp and put it like that well actually we can start this off and uh, get this going let's just get some uh, less biteier pliers than these so on these, the same again, we need to bend this carefully round. And do them both the same. If it starts bending over at like that has, you can just bend it, straighten it up again. Don't close up too tight because you need to be able to get this piece underneath there before you close it up. Right, when you're bending these over, they do slightly flare at the side, start flaring out. So you just have to file in between them two to keep it nice and loose. And then it's just a case of carefully closing these up without trapping the other piece in. So what we've got Here's another one now then. So as I say, that folds out like that, which means you can then drill a slot. You can just drill and uh, use the drill to slot it out for your staple to go through from the back. And it can just be pushed in uh, or knocked in like that, or even glued as well. And the top here, they just uh, got pins that go through. Because what I've got there, I've got some rustic old nails that go through the holes there. And just knocked in and nailed in. But you could glue them as well. So they go through the holes there. So you just give this rub over if you want with uh, sandpaper and wet and dry to whatever you sort of finish you want. And then you can get it like that. And then you can buy little padlocks. You can get a better looking padlocks than this. You can get some old style of padlocks that just go through and lock like that. So it's more for decoration than anything else. But uh, yeah, it does the job and looks quite nice compared to uh, just the normal ones that I used to put on. 
So I hope you've enjoyed the video. This was just a quick look at how I make these Haspen staples. But uh, this wasn't a how-to of pewter casting. It was just to show you how I've gone about making these. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you can give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, if you can consider subscribing, that would be brilliant. So all there is to say is take care and I'll see you next time.